Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this clown design, which was designed by me. I don't know if this is appropriate for the time, I don't know. I think it's kind of a Halloween-y design. I associate clowns with Halloween for some reason. Maybe it's because my cousin and my little brother don't like clowns, so I associate them with Halloween, but yeah. I've made a little clown design and I think it's absolutely adorable. I love it. Um, this design was kind of similar to the squirrel where right after I made it, I was like, I hate this design. And then the next day I came back to it and was like, hold on. It's pretty good, so I don't know what's up with me lately, but I swear every time lately after I finish the design, I'm like, I hate it. But, you know, that's just a me thing. Anyways. But yeah, here's the design. So you can see that there's kind of... Well, this guy has a rainbow afro, that's just a bit of an extra thing, but like... He has pants, he doesn't have pants. There's like, different like, slight changes you can do to these guys to make your clown slightly different. Um... But yeah. So I don't know if the lighting got weird suddenly. Oop. So, difficulty-wise, I actually think this is a pretty easy design of all of my, like, figures and stuff. This is actually a fairly easy figure, I think. Um, the only thing that might make it hard is color placement, because th there's, like, this whole thing going on with the pants and they're stripy, and it can be a lot. So, if you're, like, more beginner and you still want to make this design, I actually think this is a fairly easy one. I would just recommend making his whole, like, outfit, like, all one color. So I just wouldn't like, that way you don't have to worry about color placement because I feel like color placement can get confusing sometimes. So yeah, well yeah, um, band wise, I, don't, my, I haven't done the band count yet, it's, it's a pattern in my recent tutorials, I just, I could do the band count before but it takes me some time and usually I only have so much time to film so I haven't done the band count yet, it's fine. Um, but my guess is that this guy takes around probably like 300 bands. Um, maybe a little more than that, because the thing is, whenever you do, like, anything that's supposed to look fluffy, it just, like, shoots the band count way up, so it might be a little band heavy, but it's okay. So yeah, just check the description if you want to know what the band count is. Also in the description, we'll have the pattern and my Instagrams, you know, everything that's usually in the description. So check out the description for any, like, additional information, I guess. And yeah, I think that's it, so I think we'll get started. Um... So for today, for colors, I'm going to be using white again for his like face and hands. And then for his outfit, I am going to show you how to do the pants today. So for his outfit, I'm going to be doing pink. So pink for his shirt. And then his pants, I'm going to be using two different shades of yellow. It's really hard for you guys to see that difference, but there is a difference. Um, and then for his afro today, I'm not going to show you how to do the rainbow afro in the tutorial, but I will explain to you how to do the rainbow afro in the tutorial because like if I did it it would take me so long because it took me a while to do the afro because color placement so I'm not going to show you how to do the afro today my guy's afro is going to be um in this like multicolor pink purple color but I I will explain to you how to do the rainbow afro so you can if you want if that makes sense does that make sense I don't know <laughs> Um, also, I just want to mention, this is a good design that if you have some of these, like, multicolor bands that you don't really know what to do with, that they could actually work really well. I feel like they would be good for, like, the pants or, like, I, like I'm doing today, his afro. I don't know. But yeah, so I think that is it. So we will get started. Um, of course you're going to need a hook. Today I'll be using my double-ended hook. I just really like this hook. You don't need a double-ended hook. You can use a crochet hook, rainbow loom hook, whatever. Just something to loom with. Um, you're also going to need a C-clip to mark your rows, and then some stuffing and some eyes. Um, I'm using cotton balls for stuffing as always, and then for the eyes, I'll be using beads today. And yeah, I think that, oh, I think that pretty much covers everything. So, like I already mentioned, the pattern will be in the description. And yeah, I guess we will get started. So we start at the top of the clown and the way we make him is we pretty much make like his whole body so we go from like head to feet and then we attach the arms and then the afro and then like this little weird neck ruffle later. So we start at the head so we're going to get our white bands and I'm just going to pick up some bands real quick. Also if you want to stay till the end of the tutorial I have a design I've been working on that I want to show you so I'll show you at the end just to, so you know what's coming. I'm really happy with it. Well, um, there's like some slight fixes he needs but yeah I'm excited to show you. I, I love Halloween and I feel like you guys can always really tell because around Halloween I'm just like you want some spooky designs I got you. Um, 
versus like Christmas where I'm like, yeah, there's no Christmas designs, too bad, I don't know. I love Halloween, but yeah. Like, you can tell when I like the holiday versus when I'm like, maybe I should make Christmas designs because I know people like Christmas, you know? That sounds like I hate Christmas. I don't hate Christmas, but... <laughs> but I definitely prefer Halloween. Anyways. So, to start, I'm going to be adjusting my light now. <laughs> okay, so to start, we're gonna start with a triple cap band with six stitches in it, so I'll show you what to do if you don't know what that means, but if you do, you probably know where I'm going with this. Also, I'm still moving my light, I'm sorry. Um, but we're gonna start by wrapping a band three times around our hook. So this is one, two, three, and then we'll be putting six stitches, like I said, into this cat band. So we'll pull a band through the cat band, put both ends back on your hook, and then you're going to push the back loop over the front loop, like that. So then we're going to go back in through the cat band, pull a band through just the cat band, so not this last loop, put both ends back on your hook, push the back loop over the front loop, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And we're gonna do that exact same thing we just did four more times, so we have six um, stitches in the cat band in total. So we're gonna go back into the cat band, pull the band through just the cat band, put both ends back on our hook, push the back loop over the, <laughs> push the back loop over the front loop, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And we just repeat this three more times. That's one, two, and then three, so like that. So now we should have six loops in our cap band, so we're going to count to make sure we have six. So we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So one, two, three, four, five, and oop, six. <laughs> Also, if you don't know what I was counting there, I'm just counting the loops, so like one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Yeah. So once you've made sure you have six loops in your cat band, instead of going back through the cat band, we're gonna go through this first loop here. So this first loop. And we're gonna do the same thing. So we'll pull the band through just that loop, put both ends back on our hook, push the back loop over the front loop, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And this is the one that our C-clip will be going on. Like that. So, that was it for the first bit. So for the next one, we're going to be increasing everything. So every single stitch we do it, every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. And at the end of this row, we should still be at, no, we, we should now be at 12 loops. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is, but lately I've been mixing up a lot of words. I feel like sometimes when I get frazzled, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's dyslexia or just like my short attentions, man. I start mixing stuff up. Oop, just whacked my camera. But yeah. I don't know. I just, I get all, my words get all mixy up -y. That's already happening in this tutorial, but we should be okay. Um, anyways, like I said, we're going to be increasing everything, so... Every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. So this our, this uh, this first loop already has one loop in it, so we're gonna one loop, one stitch. My God, okay. Uh, ugh. So this loop already has one stitch in it, but because we're increasing, we gotta go back in and do another stitch, and then that'll be an increase. So all an increase is is you'll go into one. Oh, now we're in the next loop. You'll make a stitch. You go back in, you do another stitch, and that's an increase. So we'll just keep doing this all the way around. We're basically just poking, we're basically just putting two stitches per loop. So yeah. I don't know what's up with me and my words lately. Um, yesterday I was at school. This is just a quick story while we finish increasing everything, but um, Yesterday I was at school and they were giving out free t-shirts if you just wrote something on a card so they could send it to some people who donated money to them. And I messed up the spelling of a word that I know how to spell. I messed up my own name. Um, 
like once and then I had to scratch it out because it was in pen and then rewrite it and I was like it's just not my day today so I don't know I mean I am dyslexic and some days it's worse than others so I don't know if that's what it is because I do tend to mix up words especially if I'm like I don't know some days my word mixy uppiness is just worse than others and considering yesterday I messed up spelling a word and my name both of which I know how to spell it's just been one of those days lately but I'm, I'm good it just means that this tutorial I might be a little more everywhere. I'm gonna try to explain my best, but you guys know sometimes, sometimes my brain's just everywhere some days and that might be today. But anyways, we should be at 12 loops, so if we count we should have 12, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like that. So. So now it's going to get a bit repetitive. We're going to do three rows normal, so just three rows of single stitches. And at the end of each of these rows, we should still be at 12 loops. So we're just doing single stitches all the way around. And I am picking up bands. You know, I was actually really- I feel like that's also kind of why I'm scatterbrained, because when I get excited, my brain's just, woo, everywhere. But, um, I knew I was gonna film the clown tutorial today, and it's been a minute since I filmed, so I was like, yes, I'm gonna film a tutorial. I really do enjoy making tutorials for you guys, so... I get excited, and then my brain just gets absolutely <laughs> everywhere. But, um, yeah, I'm happy to be filming a tutorial for you guys today, especially because I'm proud of this design. I feel like whenever I'm, like, really proud of a design, I'm like, yes, I want them to be able to make it, so... Yeah, I was excited for today's tutorial. But like I said, we're going to be doing three rows normal, so this will be the first row, and all we're doing is just single stitches all the way around. So basically we're just doing one stitch per loop, and we just do this until we get to the C-clip. And at the end of this row, we should still be at 12 loops. I will stay on camera just to do all three rows, because it doesn't make sense for me to go off, because these rows are fairly simple and fast, so yeah, I'm just gonna stay on, do the rows with you, probably talk about something random, I don't know. But yeah. So this is the first row, we're almost at that C-clip. So once you get to the C-clip, you'll make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it, and you will move it up. So you'll just take it off that loop, move it up onto the loop that is on your hook, like that. So that was one row normal. Like I said, we have to do three, so I'm going to do two more. I'm just going to pick up some more white bands. There I was trying to think about anything to talk about. I'm like, what's been going on in my life lately? I don't even know, man. It's been a crazy couple weeks. I mean, school's going well. I still love all my classes. Still doing great. Um, by the way, I just started the second row of single stitches. So yeah, that's all I've really been doing. I don't even know. I've just been like doing school, painting for school. I don't know. I feel like I've gotten into the groove of school kind of because you know, like when the semester starts, like you have to get used to like the homework and everything. I kind of, I've kind of figured out how to manage my homework, so I've had, yeah, I've kind of had more free time, kind of, sort of. I also got a job this week that was, like, super exciting. Um, I have a job now, and I've been trying to get a job since I got here, because just not working and, like, making money kind of stresses me out, especially because I have to pay for some stuff myself. I did had, I did have, like, savings from when I worked in my, in my hometown. So if you don't know, I moved to college recently, so that's what I'm talking about but yeah I moved away to college recently I didn't have a job now I have a job and I'm excited I'm working at the dining hall on campus so I'm just gonna be serving food which is similar to what I did because I used to work in a nice cream place but now it's with food so I think it'll be good and I'm only working two days a week so yes okay so that was the second row of single stitches we should still be at 12 loops I'm gonna count once I finish all three rows so I'm just gonna go ahead and start the third row but yeah, so I'm excited. I, I, I'm the one who only asked to work two days because she was ready to put me for three days per week but then I was looking at my schedule and I still want to have time to make tutorials for you guys. So I'm like, yeah, only working two days a week is similar to what I used to work at 
my other job and it would make me work enough so like I can afford things but like not too much that I won't have time for tutorials because I do make some from YouTube so I consider this like I don't I don't consider making tutorials my job because I do this because I like it but it is a bonus and it's like I'm not gonna work myself super hard if I'm getting money from doing something I like anyways so I was like nah I'm just gonna work two days and between that job and then YouTube I should have enough to live which is nice but yeah, I don't know. I've been enjoying college though. Um, yeah, I've been talking to my teachers more, slightly annoying my teachers. I feel like I'm such a, I'm such a weird student. Um, I'm like really happy and excited to be here, which is I feel like different than a lot of kids who go to college because a lot of kids go to college because they're like, oh, my parents are making me. But honestly, I genuinely want to be here. I want to be, you know, learning and stuff. I mean, I'm an art major, so I'm just doing art. So I'm like genuinely excited for all my art classes and I guess it's weird that my teachers aren't used to that or maybe they don't get as many students who are just like yeah I really want to be here I mean there's probably a few who just like really love their one painting class but for instance um there's kind of like a basic art class I have to take right now and my drawing te well not my drawing teacher she uh, my basic like art class teacher there's just some fundamental classes they make you take I'm taking one right now and she said for extra credit, if you have an absence, she'll get rid of it. If you go to some work, drawing workshop, she has this, um, this Saturday. And I was like, can I go just for fun? And she was just like, what the heck? Because I don't have any absences yet, luckily. I've been able to go to all my classes. But I, um, I was like, can I just go to your drawing workshop for fun? I like drawing. And I guess she wasn't expecting that because she kind of looked at me like I was insane. Like, why would you come if it's not for extra credit? And I'm like, dude, I just I just want to come. I want to draw. It sounds fun. So yeah, <laughs> it was funny. But anyways, I finished the three rows normal. So now if we count around, we should be at 12 loops still. So we'll start by counting the one on our hooks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now we are going to be decreasing every third and if you don't know what that means I'll explain it in a second but basically we're going to do two single stitches and then we'll do a decrease and then we do two single stitches and then we do a decrease and we just do that all the way around so I will show you. So the one with a C clip on it is going to count as our first single stitch so we're going to do one more single stitch and then the next stitch will be a decrease so we'll grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop. And then we just make a stitch. So we'll show you that again. So once again, we got to do two single stitches because we just did a decrease. So one and then two and then the ne since we just did two single stitches, the next one will be a decrease. So inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop. And make a stitch and we just keep doing this all the way around so we do two single stitches so one and then two and then we do a decrease so like I said inside part of one loop back part of the next loop make a stitch and then you should be at the one that has a C clip on it so we'll make a stitch on the one that has a C clip on it and we will move it up Oop. Sorry, I kind of snagged something. There we go. And then we will just move our C-clip up. Like that. So now if we count around, we should be at nine loops. So we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like that. So the next row is going to be kind of similar to the last one we just did, but we're going to be decreasing every other. So we're going to alternate between doing a single stitch and then a decrease and then single stitch and then decrease. So we're just alternating what stitches we're doing. And I will show you in a second, but once again, I was just picking up a few more bands. So this one with a C-clip on it again is going to count as our first single stitch. So the next one will be a decrease. So inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop. And I'll just make a stitch. And then since we just did a decrease, so now we'll do a single stitch. And then after a single stitch, we'll do a decrease. 
So as you can tell, we're just alternating between doing a single stitch and a decrease. So single stitch, and then a decrease. Okay. And then once we get to the one that has a C-clip on it, um, we are going to make a stitch on it, but we're going to make a slip stitch because we are going to be flipping colors to our shirt color. So you're going to want to get whatever color you want for your shirt. I'm going to be doing, like I said, light pink. So you're going to want to get that. So once you get to the one with the C-clip on it, we're going to slip stitch because we're flipping colors. So we're going to pull this band through everything on our hook and then push the back one over the front one. And then you just move your C-clip up, just like you usually would. So now if we count around, we should be at six loops. So we start by counting the one on our hook. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Like that. Okay, my camera was about to time out, so I had to redo it, but we're good now. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to be increasing everything again. So this is similar to the row. Well, it's exactly the same as the row we did at the start. So every single stitch we're going to do is going to be an increase. And then at the end of this row, we should be at 12 loops again. So this one already has one loop in it, but because we're increasing, we want to go back in, do another stitch. So that way it's an increase. Like that. So like I said, we're just increasing everything. So in case you forgot what an increase is, we're just doing two stitches per loop until we get to the C-clip. So, yeah. You know, I think I finally sorted out the lighting in this tutorial. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but the lighting in this tutorial looks pretty good today because I've been struggling with lighting issues ever since I moved out here. But I think I've got them sorted now. But yeah, we're just increasing everything. And then once you get to the C-clip, you'll just make a single stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it and move it up. So we're not doing that weird thing we did last row. We only did that because we were slipping switching colors. Ah. Drop my C-clip. Okay. So like I said, now if we can, we should be at 12 loops, so we stop work handling the one on our hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like that. So now it's going to get repetitive again. We're going to be doing four rows normal, um, just in our shirt color. And I'm going to stay and I'll do two rows on camera with you and then I'm going to go off and do the other two. Also, sorry if you heard that car, jeez. Living next to a road has been interesting, you just hear so much stuff. But I was, I was literally about to say, because when I paused, like, because I had to redo the film because it was about to time out my camera. Um, I was like, man, it's actually been pretty quiet today by my house because I think I was filming something the other day and there was just like so many, so much stuff happening. And today's been pretty quiet, and I guess I hexed it, because now that random dude just was honking. Hopefully he stopped, but yeah. So like I said, we're doing four rows normal. Uh, I'm going to stay and do two with you, so we'll get started on the first one. So all we're doing is we're just doing one stitch per loop, basically. Just doing single stitches all the way around. And at the end of each of these rows, you should still be at 12 loops. But yeah. So we finally started a new assignment in my painting class. We, for like, it's already, we're halfway through the semester now. So for the first half of the semester, he just had us doing still life paintings of random still lifes we set up. And it was like, it was seven weeks of still lifes. And I was so sick and tired of it. We also had to do seven still lifes. So it was like a still life per week. And it was a lot. But it's done now. And I, I checked my grade yesterday and I got a hundred on the assignment, which is amazing. But yeah, we started a new painting assignment and our new one is to combine two abstract artists and it's been really fun and I'm just glad it's not a still life, oh my god. But once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the one that has the C-clip on it and move it up. So that'll be the first row of single stitches. Like I said, we got to do four. 
So I'm gonna keep going around because we still gotta do three more. But yeah, my painting assignment, the new ones to combine two abstract artists. So I'm doing one of my former teachers from my community college and then I'm doing some other artists, um, Alberto Burry. I don't know if you guys, none of you probably know who that is. I didn't know who he was until this assignment. So, but yeah, I'm doing him, combining him with one of my former teachers. It's gonna be fun. I'm, I'm excited. It's also amazing because all the still lifes we had to do them in, um, in oil paint. And he, he said we didn't have to do oil paint for this assignment, so I'm doing acrylic paint. And if you don't know what the difference between oil and acrylic is, basically, oil's just more annoying. I don't know. That's basically it. It's just like, there's a lot of more toxic like, and like chemicals with oil versus like an acrylic, you can just use water. So it's just so nice to be doing acrylic again. Um... Yeah. I feel like the most annoying thing with oil is like your brushes and oil paint just takes forever to dry. Oh my god, all like oil paint gets everywhere. I thought I was messy with acrylics. With oil it was just a whole nother level. Every single pair of jeans I own ruined by paint. Not like I care, like I don't mind if my clothes have paint on them, but I was just like, like, oh, it was so bad. So when he said we could do a different paint medium for this one, I was like, forget it. I'm choosing an artist who does acrylic. And then I remembered my former teacher from my community college. And I was like, hey, you know, that could be kind of fun. I always liked her work. So, yeah. And if you guys ever want to see what I'm up to, like, painting-wise, um, I do post a lot of my other account at Tricky4. So you can follow me on there. But we have finished two rows of single stitches. So if So this is two rows of single stitches. Um, I'm gonna go off and do the other two rows. I feel like it's fairly self-explanatory what we're doing. I'm just doing one stitch per loop. You know, you know. So yeah, I'm gonna go off camera and do the other two rows um, and then we'll count to make sure we're still at 12 loops and then I'll show you what to do next. So I just finished doing the four rows or I guess the two more rows if you stayed on and did the two rows with me. Um, and yeah, we should still be at 12 loops so we're just gonna count real quick. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So like I said, you should still be at 4 loops and your clown should be looking a little something like this. And if you're wondering why I stopped one before the C-clip, um, it's because we're going to switch colors. So if you did the one on the C-clip, just undo it, it's not a big deal. But we will be switching colors. Okay, well we're switching colors if you want your guy to have, like, pants. Um... So if you wanted to have pants, you would switch colors, but I honestly do like how the clown looks with just like kind of like a onesie, I guess. So if you're doing like the onesie look, don't switch colors, you would just keep doing the same color. But if you want your clown to have pants, um, which is how I'm going to be showing you how to do it today, um, we're going to switch colors. So, yeah. So like I said, for the pants, I could be using two different colors of yellow, so I'm going to show you how to do the stripey thing. But you don't have to do the stripey thing, your pants can be a solid color, and if they were a solid color, you would just ignore what I'm doing for the stripes. So basically, we're going to be doing two rows normal in, um, just in another color. So first, we're just going to slip stitch to our new color. So we're going to go on the one that has a C-clip on it. We're going to pull a band through everything on our hook. And then push the back one over the front one. And then you just move your C-clip up. So if you're not doing stripy pants, you are just going to do two more rows of single stitches in your pant color. If you are doing stripy pants, there's, we're doing the same thing, but there is one more like kind of extra step we got to do. So because we want it, the pants to look striped, we're constantly going to be flipping between like two different colors. So I have my light yellow, and then I have the slightly darker yellow. And every single time we switch colors, we're going to slip stitch. So instead of just doing a single stitch where we just pull it through just a loop and then put the back one over the front one, we're going to pull it through everything on our hook pretty much every single time and then put the back one over the front one. So this is the part where it's like if you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend doing stripy pants because it can get a little confusing with all the slip stitching. Um, the only reason you would slip stitch for every stitch is if you're doing stripy pants. If you're not doing stripy pants, ignore this step. Just do single stitches all the way around. But um, if you are doing stripy pants, basically 
we're just going to alternate between doing the two colors and every time we switch colors you got a slip stitch so you'll pull it through everything on your hook and then put the back one over the front one and like I said we're alternating between doing two colors two different colors so basically every time we make a stitch we have to slip stitch um, it's kind of hard for you guys to see the difference in the two colors I use but you can kind of see so we have like the light color dark color light color dark color and because we're alternating like that, every single time we do a stitch, we got a slip stitch. And we just do this all the way until we get to the C-lip. So like I said, we're doing two rows normal. Um, the only thing is we do have to slip stitch, and that's just because of the color placement. It's not, it doesn't affect the design at all. It's just because of how we want the colors to look. So yeah. Yep. And then once we get to the one with the C-clip on it, you'll just make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And we're still slip stitching because we're still flipping colors. And we'll move it up. So that was one row normal. Like I said, we have to do two in the pant color. And once again, just a reminder, if you're not doing fun stripy pants, just ignore all the slip stitching. But yeah, if you are doing fun stripy pants though, you gotta do all the slip stitching. Just because it looks cleaner. like. You can do it without the slip stitching, but I like it with, just because of the, it makes everything look cleaner. And I'm just picking up bands real quick. It always takes me longer to pick up bands when they're, um, when they're stripey, because I like to put them on my finger in the order of the stripes. So it always takes me a little longer, but it's okay. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing we did last row again. So we're just doing another row of single stitches. Um, and like I said before, if you're doing stripy pants, you will be slip stitching every sti single stitch because we are alternating colors. I'm alternating between two different colors of yellow, and now I'm kind of realizing it's really hard for you guys to see me doing that. But, that is what I'm doing. I lost that band, I don't know why. But, um, yeah. So we'll just keep doing this until we get to the C-clip. And believe it or not, we are already almost done with his main body portion. This clown design actually comes together pretty quick. Which is one of the reasons why I kind of love it. I'm going to say it's pretty quick and then this hour is going to be... Not this hour, this tutorial is going to be like an hour and you'll be like, Are you sure? And I'll be like, yeah. Yeah. It's fine. So we're just going around. Alternating between our two pant colors if you're doing stripy pants. And if not, you're just doing a row of single stitches. Once you get to your C-clip, you'll make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And you're just going to move it up. Like that. So that was two rows in our pant color. Um, I feel like now you can kind of see how I'm alternating between the two different colors. It's kind of hard to tell when I'm like this. I don't know why. My camera's just like confused by all the yellow. So, now we're going to kind of make the legs. So... As you can see, he has legs, so we're going to make the legs, and it's not complicated at all. It's kind of similar to how I do the cow legs, but actually even simpler than that, out, than that because I leave one of the steps I do in the cow legs out. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense in my brain, I don't know. I'm picking up bands again, and then I'll show you what we're going to do. Oh, that's the wrong color. I don't know if I'm going to stay on- oh yeah, sorry, I'm just thinking, never mind, never mind my thought. Okay, so like I said, we're going to do the legs, and the legs aren't complicated, it's just, we're kind of going to think of this as like two halves now. So, we're going to count real quick, because we just did two rows normal, we should still have 12 loops, so it's kind of hard to count if you did a lot of slip stitching, because it looks really confusing. But we should count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, hold up. It's so hard to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, so I'm still at twelve. Um, when you're alternating and the slip stitching, it is still easy to count because you have like two different colors, so you just count them. But yeah. If you're not, I'm gonna stop mentioning the color flipping from now on just because it gets confusing for those of you who aren't doing the color flipping. So basically, we're gonna do the legs. Um, we're gonna place the same colors if you're doing stripy pants in the same spot as last time, so don't worry about that. And yeah, like I said, we're gonna think of this as two different halves, so we're gonna be using six loops per leg. So we're gonna go forward um, doing six single stitches, and then we're gonna kind of turn and then reconnect it to the start. So I'll show you how to do that. So first we're just going to do six single stitches going forward, I guess. So this one's going to be one. Um, sorry, I'm making sure I have the right color for my stripy pants. This is two. And we're still slip stitching because we're still doing stripy pants. But if you're not doing stripy pants, you'd just be doing single stitches. Just a note. So that was one, two, three. Four, five, and six. So once you've stitched forward six times, we're just gonna turn. We're gonna go back into the one that has the C clip on it, and we're just gonna make a stitch. And you would move your C clip up. Mine just kind of flew out, so I'm gonna put it back on the new band. But yeah. That's pretty much it. So now if you count around, you should be at six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And like that. So now we're only gonna go around this little bit. We're gonna ignore this half for now. So we're just gonna be going around this. But that is how you do the first part of the leg. I'm just gonna pick up more bands. So for the next row, um, now on our little, like weird tiny leg we made, um, we are going to be increasing one on the sides. And the reason why we do this is as you can see, I did give my clown, I don't know, he's got like a little bit of hip or like some balloony pants. I'm not sure which, but I like how it looks. So we're going to be increasing one on the side. And this is, uh, this makes more sense when we actually do it. But yeah. And we'll just keep putting all the colors in the same spot. So... So I'm going to do one single stitch, um, still slip stitching when we flip colors if you're doing stripy pants, that hasn't changed, but I'm going to do one single stitch. And then on this next one here, so I just did two single stitches and on the next one here I'm going to do the increase on the side I guess, because this is kind of as you can see like the side of our clown. So on this next one I'm going to do an increase, so we'll just do an increase. We just do an increase and then the rest of the way is just going to be single stitches and we're still just alternating colors um, if you're doing the stripy pants and this one right here might be a little awkward or like looking stretched far you still will just do a single stitch on it And then you should be at the one that has a C-clip on it. Huh. I could grab it, oh my god. Did I grab it? No, I didn't, okay. So once you get to the one that has a C-clip on it, you're just going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And move it up. So now we should be at seven loops, so we'll count. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like that. And I know mine looks a little confusing, but that's just because of all the slip stitching I'm doing because I am doing like stripy pants, but it's it's worth it for the stripy pants. So for the next row, we are going to be doing one row normal. So we're just gonna do a row of single stitches around this. And after this row, we will be switching to the shoe color. So once you get to the C clip, we will be switching to our shoe color. 
but I'll get to that when we get there. Uh, also, I know I haven't been mentioning for people who have been doing the stripy pants too much about the color placement, and that's just because we're just placing the colors like in the same spots, or we're, we're basically just alternating. So yeah. Yep. So we're just gonna do single stitch, single stitches all the way around this, and at the end of this row, we should still be at seven loops. And I'm getting a battery warning. Hold up. Okay, I flipped the battery out. We're good. So, I forgot what I was doing last because I kind of took an Oreo break. Doesn't matter, but, um, I think we're still going around. What are we doing? What were we doing? What on earth were we doing? Oh, we're just doing a row of single stitches. I'm like, completely forgot. Oopsie. We're good, though. Okay, yeah. So, we're just doing a row of single stitches all the way around. Which you guys probably knew, but I forgot because I, I went to switch the battery and then I was like, man, I kind of want a snack. And then I was just like, so I ate Oreos, um, but it's fine. So yeah, so we're just gonna do a single stitch, a row of single stitches all the way around this, and we're still alternating colors if you are doing stripey pants. So once you get to your C-clip, you're just gonna make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it, and you're gonna move it up. Like that. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm questioning my own pattern, but I shouldn't. Um, so like I said, we should still be at seven stitches, so I don't remember if I counted already, but we'll count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is it for our yellow pant color. So now you're going to want to get whatever color for your shoes. Um, for this guy, I matched his shoes to his shirt, but today I'm actually going to be doing some dark purple shoes just because I want the shoes to match the hair on my clown. So I'm going to be switching to purple. Um... Oh shoot, I messed up. Okay, never mind. We're still in the pant color. Oh, none of you probably started looming it, so we're fine. But yeah, we still have one more row to do in the pan color. I thought we did. Um, I always hate when I mess up because I'm like, should I redo this? But I think I'm just going to leave it in because it wasn't a big mess up. So we're actually decreasing one on the side next. So basically the same spot we increased on the side last row, we're going to now decrease one on the side. And this is our last row in the pan color now. So, yeah. Sorry about that. So like I said, we're gonna decrease one on the side, so this is our first stitch. Um, I'm gonna do one more single stitch. And then on this one right here, we're gonna do our decrease. So we're gonna grab the inside part of one loop, and then back part of the next loop. Then we'll just make a stitch. And then the rest of the way is just single stitches. And by decrease one on the side, you can see I meant like the side that's towards the outside. But um, we're just gonna do single stitches the rest of the way. And this is our last row on the pant color. That was a big whoopsie on my part, I don't know. <laughs> I just messed up. Uh, it's fine. So now once we get to the C-clip, um, we're going to switch to our shoe color, so get whatever color you want for your shoes. Like I said, I'm using dark purple today, and we're just going to do, we're just going to switch to the shoe color. So if you've been doing your pants in a solid color, we are going to slip stitch on this one to switch colors. Um, also, if you noticed I was doing slip stitches every time, it was because I was switching colors because of the stripy pants. But yeah, so we're going to do a slip stitch to the shoe color, so we're going to pull the band through everything on our hook. Both ends back on your hook, and then push the back one over the front one. And we'll just move our C-clip up onto this band. And because we decreased the one on the side, um, we should be at six loops now. So one, two, three, four, five. There's six. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six, right? One. Yeah, there's six. I'm just having issues counting. So now we're going to do one row normal, but in the shoe color. So we're just going to do a row normal with the 
dark purple. So we're just going to do a row of single stitches and we're not, and if you were doing stripy pants, we're no longer slip stitching. We're just doing single stitches because we're not flipping colors. So we're just doing single stitches all the way around. And then once you get to the one with a seagull on it, you'll just make a stitch on the one that has a seagull on it and move it up. Like that. So I just realized that we forgot to stuff this guy. So we're going to stuff him now. Luckily we still have this giant hole to stuff our clown with. So if we haven't, we haven't stuffed him yet, we're going to stuff him right now. And yeah. I like using cotton balls to stuff. So I have a cotton ball and just tearing it up off camera. And then I will use it as stuffing. So we'll just go through right here and we'll shove some stuffing in to his head. There we go. So yeah, we'll just stuff him. I always nearly forget to stuff him, especially when they have legs. I just always, always nearly forget. Really making sure his head has enough stuffing. We don't want him to have like a soggy head. So we're just gonna wanna stuff him. We will also want to stuff the leg right now too. You can stuff the leg kind of from the top down or you can shove it because it's still open. You can shove the stuffing through the bottom, but whichever way works for you. I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to shove the stuffing through the top here for the leg. And I usually don't put a lot of stuffing in the legs. Usually they don't need that much stuffing, so I don't really worry too much about it. Yeah. So now that my guy's all stuffed, I'm going to put my hook back in. And now we're just going to decrease everything until close. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. So we got the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, make a stitch. We'll do that again. So inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, make a stitch. And at this point we can just take the C-clip out. And I think the next one is going to be the last decrease we can pop possibly do. So we're going to grab that decrease on our hook. So inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, and we're going to tie it off. So because this is the last decrease we could possibly do, we're just going to pull a band through everything on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then pull tight. Like that. And we'll just hide our tail into our clown. So... We'll just come, just come up, grab the tail, and then pull it in. Just hide that band in. Sorry, I always have trouble tucking it in on camera. I tried, but it was not happening. But basically you just want to pull it into your clown so you can't see it. And yeah. So that's one leg. We pretty much have to repeat the last couple steps on this side to make the other leg. I am going to stay on and show you how to do that. So we're going to pick up more of our pant color again because obviously we'll be starting at the pant. And we're pretty much just gonna do the same thing again to make the other leg. So we're gonna start from the spot where we like do six single stitches. And then we'll go down from there. So, yeah. So if you already know what you're doing, you can just follow the pattern in the description. You don't have to watch this tutorial. I mean, obviously no one's forcing you, but 
I am going to show you in case any of you are confused. That way we'll all be good, hopefully. So we're just going to come to the to the first stitch here. So I can tell that this is the last one I did a stitch on. So we'll just come to this one right here. And we'll just make a stitch. And we'll put a C-clip on this one. And then there should be um, six loops left so you just do single stitches on all six of the loops and because we're back at the pants I'm alternating colors again because I'm still doing the stripy pant thing so I'm just alternating colors again and you should have six loops left so you should be doing six single stitches right about now or six slip stitches if you're doing stripy pants So once you're pretty sure you got all of the single stitches, you're just going to want to count to make sure you did six. So refocus my camera. <laughs> so you should have one, two, three, four, five, six. So once you did six single stitches, you're going to turn and you're going to go back through this first loop here with a C-clip on it. And you're just going to make a stitch. And that will be the start to our leg. So now we're going to do the same thing as before, so we're going to increase one on the side. So this is our first one. The next one's just going to be a single stitch as well. And then this one right here we're going to do our increase on, because as you can see it's kind of the one that's the most on the side, so we'll do our increase on this one. So we'll do an increase. And don't remember to always slip stitch if you're flipping colors with the stripy pants. I'm kind of not mentioning it because it's just going to make everything more confusing. But just remember to do that. So once you've done your increase, it's just going to be single stitches the rest of the way. And at the end of this row, we should be at seven loops. And I am going a little faster right now because we already did all these steps. So hopefully you know what's going on. So we're just doing single stitches the rest of the way. Then once you get to the one with the C-clip on it, you're just going to make a stitch with the one that has a C-clip on it. And you're going to move it up. Like that. So like I said, now we should be at seven loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're just going to do a row normal around this. And at the end of this row, we should still be at seven loops. Hmm. You know, I thought this was going to be a quick tutorial, but I'm kind of realizing now that it's probably going to be a little bit of a longer one, but it's totally worth it. This clown is so cute, at least in my opinion. I'm very proud of this design. And once we get to the one with the C-clip on it, we're going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it and move it up. So that was one row normal. Um, we should still be at seven loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like that. So once again, for the next row, we're going to be um, decreasing one on the side. So the same spot we increased, now we're going to decrease. And then after this row, we are going to switch to our shoe color. And I'm picking up bands again. Just 
doing some band picking up. Okay, so like I said, we're just going to decrease one on the side. So here was our first stitch and I just did one single stitch and now I'm kind of more or less on the side so I'm going to do a decrease. So I'm going to grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, then just make a stitch. And the rest of the way will just be single stitches. Like I said, that was it for our pan color, so now we're going to be switching to our shoe color, so get that. So once you get to the one with the C-clip on it, you're just going to slip stitch to our shoe color, and then move your C-clip up. Like that. So now we're done with the pan color. Also, now is a good time to add a little bit of stuffing to this leg before we close it up, so just get your stuffing. And we'll just add a tiny bit to this leg. Just so it's not soggy. Also, I have issues stuffing with this leg on camera. So um, I'm just going to do it off camera really quick. But I'm just adding stuffing to the leg. Nothing too crazy. I don't know. Okay, so now we'll put our hook back in and we're just going to do a row normal of single stitches in our shoe color. And I'm picking up shoe bands or shoe color bands. We'll just do a row of single stitches all the way around. And once we get to the C-clip, we'll just make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And we will move it up. So now you should still be at six loops, so let's just count to make sure. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that is pretty much it for this, so we're just going to now decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease until we can't decrease anymore. So we can also take the C-clip out at this point. Um, I think the next decrease is going to be the last one I could possibly do. So once you have the last decrease you can do up on your hook, you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook and then push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then once again we'll just hide this tail into our leg, or until the, into the clown I guess. So we'll just pull it into, I'm sorry it's a little out of focus. So we'll just pull it into our creation just to hide it. Once again, I'm, I'm always so bad at tucking tails on camera that I just wanted to finish tucking it off camera. But yeah. So now your clown should look something like this. You should pretty much have the basic body structure. So now we just need to add all his like accessories kind of. I mean, we need to do arms, um, this neck frill, and then his hair, and then uh, ears, and of course face. So I'm going to show you how to do all that. I think a good place to start, or where I always start after I do this, is the neck frill, so we'll do that next. And I've done like different colors for the neck frill, so like made this one match his pants. On this guy I made his neck frill match his shoes. Um, today I think I'm going to use the shirt color and the shoe color, just because I want it to match his shoes again. I don't know. Sorry, I'm just getting some of the color. And then some of our shirt color. We need to pick up some of our shirt color. <laughs> okay, I know what to do. I remember how to do the ruffle. <laughs> I just read my pattern because I was like, oh, I need to brush up on that. So I'm just going to pick up some bands and then we will do it. 
Okay, so Necroful. So we're gonna get our clown and if you like one side to be the front, now is the time to commit. I kind of like this side better so this is gonna be the front of my clown so I'm gonna flip him to the back side. And we're gonna go right here so you can kind of see. We're gonna go about right here on the clown so you can see it's been between these two like horizontal looking kind of bands so we're going between those two. And we're just gonna stitch around the neck. And I'm kind of gonna go into the same ish spot all the way around. So you can kind of see I'm going in between these like two things. And we're just gonna stitch around the neck. So once you get back to where you started, so I can tell that's my first loop right there, we're just going to go through that loop, make a stitch, and then we'll put our C-clip on this one, like that. So now we're going to do a row increasing everything, so we're just going to increase everything all the way around like where we stitch it on the neck because we have all these loops going across. So this one already has one stitch in it, but we're going to want to go back in and do another one. Like that. And we're just going to keep increasing all the way around in our ruffle color. Well, I usually make the ruffle match the shirt, so right now we're in our shirt color. We're just increasing all the way around the neck on the loops we made. Like a fuzzy on him. There's a fuzzy. I don't know why this fuzzy's bugging me so much, but I want to get it out. Come on. Oh my god. It's so annoying and it won't come out. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's just fuzzy's annoying me. There we go, I got the fuzzy out. So we'll just e keep increasing until we get to where the C-clip is. I gotta pick up more bands. So we'll just keep increasing. And then once we get to, well I'm almost at, it's a little awkward to loom on the neck. So it's taking me a little longer. But once we get to the one with the C-clip on it, we're going to flip to our, like the color you want for the edge of your ruffle. So for this one it was like dark blue, this one it was red. And for this guy it's going to be dark purple for me. So I'm going to slip stitch to my dark purple color. So I'll just slip stitch to my dark purple color and then move our C-clip up. And now we're just going to do a row around the ruffle in dark purple or whatever color your um, edge of your ruffle is. Like that. And we'll just go around. Just bumped the camera, sorry. I feel like I'm not being as talkative as I was in the start of the tutorial, but that's because I'm focused because I feel like this bit at the end where we're doing all the attaching and stuff, that's where things can get confusing. So I'm really trying to like focus on explaining well versus like the start was kind of easy, but now I know it kind of gets a little complicated. Well, not complicated, but just, I just feel like there's a lot going on. So I'm like, 
<laughs> I'm not as talkative kind of because I'm like focused like okay I gotta explain this right but once we get to the one that has a C clip on it we're just gonna tie it off so once you get to the one that has a C clip on it you're just gonna go through that loop that has the C clip on it you're gonna pull a band through everything on your hook push the back one over the front one and then pull tight and you'll just take your C clip out and then you'll hide this this band into your to your clown Sorry, I couldn't get the sequel clip off. But we'll just hide this like tail into our clown. And I usually just come up under the ruffle. Kind of pull it in. To hide it in our clown. I don't know why, but whenever I try to tuck tails in on camera, I always end up snagging something. It's just hard for me to kind of see what I'm doing. So sorry for always tucking in my tails off camera, but it's just such a struggle <laughs> to tuck them on camera for like no reason. It's just hard. Uh, it's not cooperating. It's not like tucking in tails are hard, it's just it's like hard for me to see exactly what I'm doing. So I always end up snagging some bands I don't need to like snag. But once you tuck your tail in, you should have a nice little ruffle. And there is a little bit of an awkward bit right there. That's why you want to start in the back. That way it ends up in the back and the front of your clown looks good. Oh, he's looking so cute. Okay. So we're going to do his arms next. And I'm sorry if you hear wrinkling. I would, I've run out of the shirt color, so i got to dump more out. Get out. Okay, there we go. So we'll do his arms next. So we're just going to set this aside and we're going to make him some arms. So we're going to start with our white or whatever color you made for your clown's face or head. Um, for me it was white so I'm going to get my white. I'm just picking up some white bands. And we're going to be doing a triple cap band with four stitches in it. So yeah. So we're just going to be doing a triple cap band like I said with four stitches in it. So we're just going to wrap a band three times around our hook and then we'll be putting four stitches into our cap band. I also don't know. Is it focused? Hmm. Interesting. But we'll just be putting four stitches into this cap band. That was one. Two. And always make sure you go through the whole cap band. Sometimes when they're tripled it's easy to miss a stitch so just make sure you go through the whole thing. Three, then four, then you'll just count to make sure you have four, so one, two, three, four. And instead of going into the cap band now, we're going to go in through this first loop here, and we're going to switch to our shirt color. So you're going to want to get your shirt color. And we're just going to make a stitch on this first loop. Well, we're going to slip stitch because we're switch switching to our shirt color. And then our C-clip is going to go on this one. So now we're going to do two, row normals, two rows normal just in our shirt color around this really tiny thing. So that was one row. We're gonna do one more. So we'll just move our C clip up. And I know it can be kind of hard to see what you're looming because it does get kind of tight. But I'm trying my best to show you how I'm doing it. That was one row, so it's gonna be row two. And then once you get to the one with the C clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the one that has a C clip on it. And at this point, we're just going to take the C clip out. And we're going to pick up the next stitches if we were decreasing. So we're going to grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop. And then we're just going to pull a band through everything on our hook. And we're going to use this band to tie it into our clown. So I usually lift the ruffle a bit because... I like to tie the arm like right under the ruffle, so I'm going to tie the arm right, 
Where should the yarn go? I'm gonna tie it like right here. I'm just gonna use this band to tie it into our clown. Like that. And I'll usually tie his arm down again one more time, just like lower, because I don't like how his arm like awkwardly sticks out. So I just tie it like here and then like onto the body. Just so it doesn't odd like oddly like stick out. So we'll just pull the band through all that. Snagged something. Oh, okay, there we go. And then you'll just push the back one over the front one and pull tight to tie it on. Like that. And we'll just hide our two tails. So I'm just gonna hide them in really quickly off camera. Because if I try to hide these in on camera, it's gonna take me twice as long. And you guys don't need to see me struggle. <laughs> We'll just hide them in our clown. And that's an arm. So you're going to repeat this on the other side. Uh, I'm not going to show you again just because it's just going to make this tutorial longer and it doesn't need to be. So I'm going to show you how to do the buttons next. So for the buttons, all it is, it is, is it, all it is, is a, f a band wrapped four times around your hook. So we'll wrap it around twice. Then grab both of those, wrap them around again. And then we'll just pull a band that is our shirt color through and then we'll use this band to tie it onto our shirt uh, so I'm gonna put one right here we'll just tie it on like that and then I'll make another button because all of mine have two buttons so I'm just gonna make another one so we'll wrap a band four times around our hook pull a band through and then just tie it into our shirt. Like that. And then you'll hide both these tails. Once again, I'm going to hide them off camera because no one wants to see me struggling. <laughs> At least I hope you don't want to see me struggling to hide tails. Hopefully you don't. I don't imagine you do. Like that. So, like I said, you would make two arms, but for tutorial purposes, uh, I'll make him another one later, just because it's just going to make this tutorial long. And you can always just rewind this video and make the other arm. But I'm going to show you how to do the hair next, because that's like the next big thing our clown needs. So, we're going to do the hair. And, yeah, so you're going to want to get whatever color you want for your hair. Like I said, I'm using these two, like these um, bands that are like pink and purple. And I'm going to explain to you how to do the rainbow afro if you want to do a rainbow afro like I did on this guy. But I'm j I am going to be just technically making my afro like a solid color. And I'm picking up bands, so... That is why it's silent. So, once again, we're going to start in the back of our head. So, this is the front of our clown. We're going to flip him to the back. I usually kind of like to go upside down, so he's kind of upside down right now. And I'm gonna come right here, so on the bottom, like middle back of head, and I'm just gonna make a stitch. But we're also gonna be adding fluff bands on, or like fluff bands, onto all of these loops. So we're gonna remove this band from our hook. We're gonna wrap a band twice around our hook. Then we're gonna put this band back on our hook, and we're just gonna slide that band over. And that's just for the first one. So whenever we add fluff bands before, we're going to actually add the fluff band on before we make the stitch. So we'll put our fluff band on our hook and then go make the stitch. Um, I just want to make a quick note about the rainbow afro. So if you're doing a rainbow afro, right now we're going to stitch around our head about 12 times. But to be honest, if you have like 13 or 11, it's not that big a deal. But if you're doing the rainbow afro, what you're going to do is basically when you're stitching around, you're just going to do it in rainbow order so you'll start with red and then you'll go to orange not go to orange you're gonna go to purple so you'll just do like all the colors from red to purple and you will be slip stitching every time you flip colors and you'll just do it um if you do the rainbow afro i do recommend you making it 12 loops and then using six colors just so it comes out nice and even so you'll start in red you'll go to purple and then you'll probably have to do another set so you'll go from red to purple again and yeah, that's pretty much it. So, you, And then where you would place the colors the rest of the time is basically if the loop's red, you make it red. Um, I do like to shift all my colors back one after I do one row. 
just with all of them on the same loops just because the rows then come out straighter but you could just technically for the whole afro um put like all the red like loop bands on the red loops and your your afro would just have a little bit more of like a like a swirl look to it but it's, so it's not that big a deal but if you don't want the swirl look after you do the first row normal after this um the first initial row you're just going to shift all your colors back one row so hopefully that makes sense um i'm not going to be doing a rainbow after today because as you can tell it's just going to make it's just going to make everything longer also i didn't want my clown to have a rainbow afro but if you want to make a rainbow afro that's how you would do it for those of us who are not making a rainbow afro we're going to continue so like I said, we're adding fluff bands for every single one on our hook. So we're going to double a band on our hook. And you're kind of going to want to think of like a hairline. So we're going to stitch and we're kind of going to go up. And then we're going to go up in the front and then we're going to come back down and around. So we're kind of making it like a hairline. And we're going to stitch about 12 times. Um, if you end up with 13 stitches, it's not a huge deal. If you end up with 11 stitches, not a huge deal. You just kind of want in the bark, like ballpark, I guess, of 12. So we're just going to stitch around his head and remember that you're kind of giving him like a hairline. So you'll make a stitch and then before you push the back one over the front one you'll just push the fluff band over and then the back one over the front one and that's pretty much where the fluff goes. And just remember every time before you make a stitch you want to add that fluff band. And yeah just try to give your clown a nice hairline. I don't know how to explain it kind of just have to think about how hair looks like you want it longer in the back and then kind of to come up in the front so we have space for the face and yeah so we're just stitching around I'm also not going to mention but we are adding fluff pretty much this whole afro until we get to the very end to tie it up so I'm not going to mention the fluff anymore but every single stitch you do want to add fluff and yeah just try to give him a nice half like a nice hairline I don't know how to explain it but you really have to just kind of commit to the hairline. You want it to come up in the front and then go back down in the back. That's kind of what's important. Sorry, I'm just looking how my clown hair my clown's hairline is coming along cuz I don't want him to don't want him to look funny. Okay. It's coming along pretty well. You can kind of see how I was like down in the back and now I'm kind of coming up in the front. I won't doubt if my clown ends up with a weird hairline from this tutorial because every single time I do a tutorial it's always hard to see exactly where I'm like stitching. So sometimes things end up a little odd. So I would just say make your hairline how you see fit because sometimes it is, it is hard for me to see what I'm doing on camera. So just, just try to give your clown a nice hairline. Just make sure it comes like down in the back, up in the front so you have space for the face and that's really all that matters. I'm sorry, I'm picking up bands again. Oops, oops, I just accidentally unlooped everything. Whoops. But yeah, we're just gonna keep going around. I, I feel like my clown's hairline is crooked. <laughs> Oh no, it's fine, it's fine. I'm kind of looking over my camera to stitch right now. Usually I look through it, or look at the screen on my camera, but I kind of can't see what I'm doing, so I'm just trying to... kind of looking over the camera. And we're almost back down. Hmm, I'm gonna stitch right here. So then once you've kind of made your way around and you're back at this first loop here, you're just gonna make a stitch on the on that loop and then this is where we'll be where we will be putting our C clip. And now we're just gonna count around. So you should have around twelve loops. Um if you have one more or less, I would just leave it. I wouldn't worry about it. So let me count around to see how many I have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, tw
10, 11, 12. So I actually have exactly 12, and that's just by chance. Um, like I said, if you have one less or one more, I wouldn't. I w it was not a big deal, so I would just leave it. But now we are going to do four rows normal. So we're just going to do four rows of single stitches. I'm going to do the first row with you, and then I'm going to do the other three off camera. Just because of the fluff bands, it takes a little bit longer. So I'm just going to do one row with you, and then I'll do the other four single rows off camera. And yeah. Yippity yep. So, yeah. I feel like I'm being so loud today. I don't know if it's because I know my roommate's not home, but I'm just, like, being loud and obnoxious making a tutorial. So. Yep. But. Yeah, so we're just single stitching all- making- doing single stitches all the way around. And just remember to add those fluff bands so your clown has a nice fluffy afro. Or I guess a clown wig, I don't know. But yeah, so we'll just do single stitches all the way around. And at the end of each of these rows, you should still be at 12 loops. Or how, however many loops you had um, the first time you counted, you should still be at that exact same number. But yeah. So we're just doing single stitches all the way around, adding fluff bands. I'm almost there. The afro always takes so many bands. Which is kind of why I'm using these weird, like, um, bluey pinky bands. Is because I have so many of these. Just like every time you buy a neon bucket, they give you a pack of these. And it's like a pack of a thousand. So, yeah, I'm kind of using these on purpose. I just have so many. But yeah, we're just doing single stitches the rest of the way. Also, if my camera cuts out, I'm just going to go finish the rest of the rows off camera because right now it's already at 22 minutes and usually it likes to cut out right here so yeah but we're almost there almost there the fluff bands just make everything take 10 times longer Okay, but once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it. And you're going to move it up. So that was one row. Like I said, we want to do four. Uh, my, my guy's afro is kind of going down. You want it to go up. So like I said, that was one row. We want to do four more. Well, four total, so I have to do three more. So I'm going to go off camera, complete the three rows, and then I'm going to come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so I did the four rows and his afro should- well, your clown's afro should be looking a little something like this. Also, my clown just suddenly got another arm because while I was doing the rows, I was like, hey, now's a good time to put his other arm on, so I made him another arm. But, yeah, so after you're four, doing four rows on the afro, it should look a little something like this. And, yeah, so now what we're gonna do next- oh, hold on, my camera's- oops, sorry for all those squeaky noises. Um. But what we're going to do next is we are going to do two rows decreasing every other. So basically just two rows, but we're alternating between doing a decrease and then a single stitch. And I'm picking up more bands, which I realized I should have done before I came back, but I of course forgot. So yeah, we're just going to do two rows decreasing every other. We're still adding fluff bands, so even if I don't mention it, we're still putting fluff bands on like we've been for the past four rows. And also, if you're doing the rainbow afro, um, just try to place the colors as best you can to where they feel like they go. This is where it kind of gets a little messy. You can see mine got a little messy here, but um, it's kind of on the top of his head, so you don't really see it. Just a note. Anyways. So this first one's going to be our single stitch, so that means the next one's going to be a decrease. So like I said, we're still adding fluff. And you're going to grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, make a stitch. And then because we just did a decrease, we'll do a single stitch. And then the next one we'll do a decrease. And 
So yeah, like, like I mentioned, we're just alternating between doing a decrease and then a single stitch. And we just do this all the way around until we get to the C-clip. And just remember to keep adding fluff bands for these two rows. Um, I will be staying on camera and doing both these rows with you. But just a note. Decrease. You know, this tutorial took me way longer than I thought. I believe I started filming this at like... I mean, I've been filming for like two hours now, but it's like two hours, not consistently. I mean, this tutorial's not two hours, but sometimes I pause and, you know, I do rows off camera. So, yeah, it's been about two hours. Decrease. Okay. And then once you get to the one that has a sequel on it, you'll just make a stitch on the one that has a sequel on it and move it up. Like that. So now if you count around, we should be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we should be at about 8 loops. And yeah, now we're going to do the same thing again because we have to do two rows decreasing every other. So we're going to do that exact same thing again. And we're still adding fluff bands. And I'm picking up more bands because I need to. And after this, we're pretty much almost pretty much done. We just have to put his face on, and then we're good. Our clown's done. I absolutely love this design, though. But when I was making his afro, like, like finished doing the four rows that I was said I was gonna do off camera, I don't know why, but his hair is just giving me like loofah vibes. I have no idea. I've never had a loofah the color that it, of his hair, but it's just giving loofah vibes. But yeah, so we just did a single stitch. So the next one will be a decrease. So we're still just alternating. If you make a clown though, I know I, I'm gonna say this again at the end, but show it to me. I honestly really want to see what color combos you guys do. Um, I feel like some of my designs, like you can really like go off with the colors and do some stuff very different. Like um, when I had my loom contest in the summer, I loved seeing everyone's alpacas. They were so cute and there was just so many cute color combinations and I feel like this clown is one where you guys can really like have fun with the color combinations. So if you make a clown, definitely show it to me. I would love to see it. I've been really, I'm going to say this again at the end, but I've been kind of behind on, um, on like liking posts, but I do see them and I do enjoy seeing them. Also our last decrease is going to end on the one that, with a C clip. Just do the decrease. Uh, and I forgot the fluff for this one. Whoopsie. And at this point we could just take the C-clip out, so let's just do that. But we'll still count around to see how many we have. So just take your C-clip out. And if you count around, you should be at one, two, three, four, five loops. And at this point, we're going to stop adding the fluff, and we're just going to decrease everything until close. So we're just going to decrease until we can't decrease anymore, which is probably going to be pretty soon. So, on, yeah, literally, the, I did one decrease, and literally the next one's going to be my last decrease. So once you have your last decrease up on your hook, you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook, push it back and over the front one, and pull tight. And then you'll just hide this band into the afro, and it's actually really easy to hide it in because... Even if it sticks out, like, look, I pulled it out here. I can just leave it sticking out because no one's going to tell. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know why, but I don't know if it's the colors I chose, but my clown is really giving me, like, this is giving loofah, and then the outfit's giving me a grandma. I don't know why. Also, I just realized we forgot to put his little... I have, like, pom-poms on his toes, so he's, like, some kind of weird Tinkerbell. <laughs> So let's add pom-poms to his toes. What color pom-poms? Should I do like pink pom- yeah, let's do pink for his pom-poms on his toes. And the pom-poms on his toes are made the same as the buttons, so we just wrap a band four times around our hook. Oops. Four? Okay. So we have two bands that are wrapped four times around our hook. Then you'll just get your shoe color. You'll just slide one of these on. And then tie it onto the front of the shoe. We'll get the other one. Slide it on. Tie it onto the front of the shoe. That. 
and then you'll just hide the tails. So I'm going to hide the tails real quick. And right now is probably a good time for me to mention that you want to get your eyes um, and whatever stuff you kind of need for the face. So we're just going to need eyes, nose. We're going to do all that right now. And I actually like to place the nose first, so that's what we'll start with. But yeah, there's just toe pom-poms. So you're going to want to get whatever colors you want for the nose, and you're going to get two bands and whatever color that is. I'm going to be doing red again just because I feel like all clowns have a red nose, so I'm going to do red again. And all you're going to do is you're going to take these two bands and you're going to wrap them four times around your hook. So that's two, three, four. And then you'll just take a white band or whatever color your clown's face is. Slide this nose onto that band. And we're pretty much just going to tie this right in the middle of his face. Or her face. I guess their face. It doesn't matter. The gender doesn't matter. Like that. So we'll just tie the nose right in the middle. Hide the tail. Like that. <laughs> okay, so let's just put our eyes on and then we'll put his weird, like, I don't know, what are these, like, eye tears? I don't know what they are. But most clowns do have, like, that blue or whatever under their eyes, so I'll show you how to do that after. But first we'll put our eyes on, because you want to know where your eyes are so you can put his tears under it. I don't know, are they tears? What are they? So, I'm going to get my beads, uh, get a string. Oh, my beads are literally rolling away. Okay. So we'll get our beads, get a string, we're going to put our bead onto our string, Ooh, focus, oh, oh my god, there we go, then we'll put our band onto the string as well. We'll fold over, go back through the bead. Then I'm going to go through the bead off camera because I can't see. <laughs> so we go over, go fold over, go back through the bead, and then you'll just slide your bead onto the band. And you're going to repeat for the other eye. I'm going to just do this really quickly off camera because, oh my god. There are certain things that are just hard to do on camera. And it's literally hiding tails, stuffing, and then putting um, beads onto bands. Just so hard that and then we'll just take these bands also if you don't have um, beads you can always just wrap a band four times around your hook like we did for the buttons I would actually wrap it five times around your hook and then you can just slide it onto a band and then you tie it in the same way we would a bead we're just gonna tie it into our clown I usually just put them on either side of the nose. Oh my god. <laughs> this clown is giving me grandma vibes. I don't know why. But he could be a grandma. I don't know. <laughs> and then we'll just hide the tails once you like where the eyes are. And once again, I'm hiding them off camera because... Because hiding them on camera is very difficult. Why is it difficult? I'm not entirely sure. Okay. And then we're just going to want to get whatever color, like I said, you want for these like weird things under his eyes. Uh, I think I'm going to do yellow. Yeah, like this darker yellow. And you're going to come right under where the eye is. Like really close to under where the eye is. You're going to pull a band through, push the back one over the front one, and pull it tight but not too tight. And then you'll just like, kind of like gently tuck the tail in. Like that. Yeah, but you want to come really close to under where the eye is. You don't want these guys to be like really far away. <laughs> okay. Like that. I don't know why this one looks a little sideways. Um, honestly, for the placement of the ones under the eye, you kind of just have to, like, it's trial and error. If you don't like where it is, just move it slightly and see if that place is better. Honestly, it's really, it's really just trial and error. See, but now that feels too far away from the eye. I'll have to adjust that one, but 
that is pretty much it for this clown. Um, this clown is definitely giving me kind of grandma vibes, and I think it's kind of adorable. Maybe I'll make this one a happy clown. Um, these guys have all been sad clowns, so maybe we'll have a happy clown. Um, so just a note on the mouth. Um, to glue the mouth on, all I do is I cut a black band, then I get some hot glue, I'll put a dot of hot glue on the face, and then I'll just take the little bit of band I cut and then set it on. I don't really do that in tutorials. I'm going to be coming out with a short, like kind of a shorter Lumigurmi Basics video soon that will show you how I do the mouths, but for now that's kind of the best explanation I can give just because I don't like always gluing the mouths on in tutorials. Um, but yeah, I think that is it for this one. I hope your clown turned out okay. If you make a clown, definitely share it with me. I want to see how they come out. Like I said earlier, I feel like this is one of those designs where you can do so much with the color combinations. So if you make a clown, show it to me. I really want to see it. Um, as always, subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me. I have more tutorials coming. I actually am going to really try to put this certain tutorial out before Halloween. He might be a partner to a certain design I made last year. As you can see, he's also total perfection. There's nothing going on in the back there. I totally didn't forget to put black on the back of his jacket. Nope, that didn't happen. Um, but yeah, maybe coming soon. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna try, guys. School is sometimes crazy, but I am gonna try to get that guy out before Halloween. Um, so yeah, subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me. I have more stuff coming. If you want to see what's coming up or when I'm working on it or when tutorials are coming, I usually post more on Instagram about that. So you can follow my Instagram if you want to see that. And yeah. So I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Like I said, I hope your client comes out okay. Um, and yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.